Jacobs here with Rob Arnold and Tree Swenson. Hello. Hi. We are going to be going on a tour of the new Hugo House space. Are you guys ready? So I'm Rob Arnold, events curator here at Hugo House, and this is Ginger, um, my intern for the day, um, and chief corgi here at Hugo House. And we are in the salon space of Hugo House. So one of the great things about the salon space is that it's open whenever we are open, whenever Hugo House is open during our normal business hours, during classes, during events. Um, and it's not uncommon to come in and see people with laptops open um, or reading on the couches or um, anything like that. That reminds me, where is Jakiva? We need to finish this tour. Jakiva, it's time to finish the tour. So we have here our bar, which is open during events. And one of the things that the architects had in mind when they were trying to design this new space, which is on the footprint of the old Hugo House, is how to incorporate elements from the old Hugo House into the new Hugo House. So one really nice detail that we have here are the floorboards from the old cabaret space with the farewell messages that people had written during our, our closing party. Um, so you have this, these nice old floorboards with the, the personalized messages, and it's also the backsplash for the bar. Another thing that we've done is we've incorporated our old typewriter collection into the space as well. So you can see this like whole area is dedicated to the, the process of writing. And uh, when you walk in, I think it really feels writerly, don't you think, Tree? I think so. I think the writers I've talked to have said they feel it when they come in. This is a place for writers. That's our entire intention in creating this big open salon. People come here before classes to meet friends or just talk about writing. That's right. And, um, and during events, sometimes we have um, authors do signings. So we have a table set up on the salon stage. And for smaller events, we have a little small stage at the end where writers can come and do a little small reading for an intimate group of, of friends. So that's a nice feature as well. Looking down this hallway is our classroom hallway, which we call the Triggering Town, um, after the Richard Hugo essay and collection. Um, one of the things that the architects really want to do with this space is create a sense of uniqueness with every space. So every single one of the classrooms is a different size. The ceilings are different heights. They all have unique features. And if you look down the hallway, it really looks kind of like a, a neighborhood street. Um, so I like to say that we went from Hugo House to a Hugo Town. Um, <laughs> it's really kind of a neighborhood down there. Um, it's, really, it's, a, it's a great space to learn about writing and learn how to be a writer yourself. And Tree, do you want to add anything to that? Well, I think the architects, when we were initially talking about this project, we were saying that it's important that these creative writing classrooms have a feeling that, that they're not just square boxes. They're not cookie cutter. They're not all the same because every writer is different. Every writer has a different story to tell. Right. So they worked on making the classrooms all very different from one another. And you'll see that there are a lot of unique features and a lot of surprises in little spaces and nooks where the creativity can flow out into the room. One of the things that we wanted to do as well is create spaces for our writers and residents and some of the other programs that we support besides events and classes. So here we have Orcas, which is the writers and residents office. And you'll see as we go through that a lot of the rooms in our space are named after Richard Hugo place names. Um, which is another way that we try to incorporate Richard Hugo's legacy into the space itself. And there would be a lot of other little surprises, little quotes by Richard Hugo in the space as well. This is the, this is the desk for Amber Flame, one of our writers in residence. Uh, and you see that we also have a, one of our uh, typewriters from our typewriter collection. And over here is the desk for Kristen Miares Young, the other writer in residence in prose. You can see that er both writers have their own unique style. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I was just going to say, I love how, I mean, I've, I've met Amber Flame, and I feel like that guitar is all you need to know about Amber Flame. <laughs> like, fun, full of spunk. I've not met this writer in residence at Hugo House, but I feel like I already know them based on, like, their artwork. I think it's so great to be in this space. Thank you for letting us take a peek in here. You didn't touch anything. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 
we needed at least one one wall in the entire house that was nothing but books because what would a writer's house, a space for writers be without books everywhere? The idea is maybe you read a hundred books, then you write one. Right, exactly. And it's one of my favorite features in all of the Hugo House is this, this book hallway. And um, one of the things I like to point out to people is this very special typewriter, which <laughs> I donated to Hugo House. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, a, it's wonderful to have all these books and to, to feel the sense of literature coming through the very walls. The new Hugo House is fully accessible with fully accessible restrooms and the restrooms are all gender. Right, when we were working on how we're going to design the space, we thought a men's room, a women's room, yeah, let's make this a multi-gender place. People can just go in whichever room they choose. They're all individual. Here we are in Lone Lake, which is one of our six classrooms. What we've been able to do in the new Hugo House is increase our classroom capacity by 50%. So in the old house, we had four classrooms, and now we have six classrooms, which gives us a lot of flexibility for the kinds of classes we can offer, how many we can offer, and how many people we can serve. Uh, I love Lone Lake because it's got this wonderful pencil wall, which is just another way that we've you know, enacted the creative experience in the visual space. Lone Lake also has a smart TV, which all of our classrooms have, um, so that teachers can plug in their laptops and do visual aids and have other kinds of dynamic uh, teaching materials. So it really adds to the classroom experience. One of the other wonderful things about Lone Lake, which a couple of our classrooms have, is a hidden surprise. Um, so I'm here taking a class or I'm just using the space as a writing space and I'm needing a little bit of inspiration. All I need to do is look up and see this wonderful quote by Richard Hugo that says, in the world of imagination, all things belong. And now I am refreshed. Secret inspiration. Secret inspirations. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, one of my favorite parts of the new Hugo House is in the theater lobby, and it is a piece of artwork by Spencer Finch, and it's titled Sunlight in an Empty Room, and then in parentheses, Emily Dickinson's Bedroom. And what it is, is that he took a number of shots, uh, open shutter shots throughout the course of a day showing sunlight moving along her bedroom. Because of course, Emily Dickinson spent most of her life alone in her room writing poems. So the idea is that she was able to create an internal world far more vast than the external one. The wallpaper here is the wallpaper that was in Emily Dickinson's bedroom historically. It's a very traditional pattern of wallpaper, but what's really interesting is that it's more faded in areas that the sunlight has hit it. You can't tell that with this piece of art because the illuminated parts are obviously much brighter than the background. We have an expandable theater, so for larger events, people can flow out into the theater lobby and still experience the event itself. And we have some cocktail tables for people to just kind of hang out um, during events or just during our open hours, just like in the salon. Whoa, this space is so huge. How many people can you like fit in here? Well, that's, that's a very good question. We have a very flexible theater. Uh, we have a maximum seating of uh, about 150, 160, um, but it can be very intimate as well. You know, we've had events with 20 people in the audience, that felt very natural, and we've had uh, 170 people in the audience, and it felt very natural as well. So that's one of the great things. This theater was designed for uh, flexibility and for the different kinds of events that we have. That's so amazing, 170 people. Like, you could speak to the masses. That's a general mass. That's it's, a, it's a pretty big audience. For a literary audience? Yeah, that's For a huge. literary audience, that's very large. It's, it's so big! Look at it! I'm so far away! This is actually so cool. And I love this stage. Is this the old stage? Yeah, yeah. podium? That is the original podium. The Works in Progress podium? That's right. Oh, I miss works in progress. I haven't been in a long time. It's still going on. The first and third Monday, correct? First and third Monday. First and third Monday. Of the month. Six. It starts at seven, but you really want to get there at six. If you come to works in progress and you want to read, you always get here at six. That's the secret. 
because like it always fills up really, really fast. And then if you get there at like seven o'clock there, you might not be able to read that night because it's so popular and it's so big. And now that it has this huge space, to have writers in, I don't know, it's going to blow up. You might have to start doing it weekly now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll look into that. We'll, look into, we'll talk to Robert about it, Robert PK, who usually runs it and see what will happen. But yes, so for those of you that do Works in Progress, or if you have books and stuff to read, you have your poem that you want to try out, Works in Progress is one of my personal favorite open mics in the city because it's super supportive, it's a very relaxed environment, and it's just so much fun. And usually, I remember in the old space, usually people would like to go out afterwards and go get tacos and stuff like that. So you can go read your poetry, make new friends, and then get tacos, and it's fun. Uh, so I love, I love, love, love Works in Progress, and I'm so happy it has this huge space now that you can skip in, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> to have a bunch of fun That's and make right. fun literary friends. Anyway, I'm like, I'm so in love with this now. I'm going to start coming back to Works in Progress. So here we are on stage at the Lapis Theater where we happen to have... Richard Hugo's original typewriter and chair. Yeah. His neighbor, um, Lois Welch, just gave us the chair. I brought it back from Montana two weeks ago. It's a regular captain's chair. But think of all of the great poems that came out of this chair typing on this typewriter. And we have this here. And Hugo, of course, is important because he, he was selected as the namesake because he came from such a troubled background and went on to become a nationally beloved poet. And the idea here is you never know who's going to be the next great writer. I think that that's amazing and I can't believe that this is actually Hugo's chair and his typewriter and we are kind of in the midst of, of greatness, not to sound hyperbolic, but it's true. Like we are, you are sitting in the chair of one of Seattle's most beloved poets in his house namesake, talking about all of the awesome poets that you guys are gonna grow and write, uh, grow and engender. And I think this is so amazing. I, I am think, in love with this new space. I think here at Hugo House, we try to nurture the greatness in everybody who comes mm -hmm. through our doors. And that's something that, you know, that we really take from the legacy of Richard Hugo and why we've incorporated so much of his legacy into the space itself. And not just poets, fiction writers, memoirists, yes. essayists, all kinds of creative writing happens here. Yeah. I started really writing my novel in the old space and I would sit in the cabaret and I would write and Hugo House has always just been that, you know, it held me accountable for writing my novel. Uh, we won't get into why I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> That's a whole other episode. Uh, but, <laughs> but I'm so happy and as I'm, I'm walking through this space, it's getting me excited to write and it's getting me so excited to see more events. I'm super stoked to see what happens in this new space. So for all of you curmudgeonly people like myself who's like, I like old spaces, don't get rid of them. See, this space is super awesome. It was, we will always love and cherish the old Hugo house. We will, the beat up rundown house that always smelled like toast <laughs> in the one hallway as you heard Francis McHugh talk about. Uh, yes, we love all those things, but oh my gosh, look at the amazing possibilities that are gonna happen in this new space. I am so excited. Rob, thank you so much for Z Sides and thank for the you. tour. Tree, thank you so much for the tour. We loved your history bits. I am so excited. I cannot talk about how excited I am. It's like too much. Okay. We are going to get back to the action. Okay. I'm going to go home and write because now I feel guilty that I haven't <laughs> written my novel on my, my weeks. And you guys are going to keep making more awesome things happen, I assume. We're going to do our best. You are. All right. <laughs> this is Jakiva Phillips, your faithful host of Z-Sides. Thank you so much for the tour, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you next time on the next episode of Z-Sides. Bye, y'all.